As you already know, Mercedes has been struggling with their performance this season, and many around the paddock have suggested they should focus on revamping their Zero side pod design. But is this really the solution? Well, stick around to find out as we dive into the details of Mercedes W14 and analyze why changing their side pods might not be the most important item on the agenda. So without further ado, let's get started. Mercedes is using the gap in the Formula 1 calendar to ramp up development work ahead of the debut of its evolved W14 at Imola next month. The fact that team principal Toto Wolff has repeatedly stated that the current design concept of the car will be overturned with updates is no secret, though work on the Imola changes was already underway before that decision was made, so this could be a multi-step process rather than the Imola upgrade being definitive. F1 technical expert Sam Collins has provided some insight into Mercedes' quandary, as well as several possible paths the eight-time constructors' champions could take. However, only one strategy stood out to Collins as the best path to success for Mercedes, and it's not just changing the dreaded side pods. If you just change the side pods, you're pretty much going to have to change every other panel you can visible on the bodywork of the car, Collins explained. That's when you get into talk of B-spec cars, in an era where you've got wind tunnel restrictions and you've got a cost cap, Mercedes is going to have to split its resources. Therein lies the second problem, according to Collins, as the team has a limited budget to work with due to the cost cap and thus has far fewer resources to allocate to development than in previous years. We have to assume that Mercedes is going to be running very close to the cost cap because why wouldn't you if you can afford it? Collins ponders. They're using all their wind tunnel allowance, and they've got very talented people working on the development of next year's car. Well, that development for next year's car, with stable regulations, could Mercedes bring next year's car forward? Not just introduce the W14B, could they introduce the W15 a hell of a lot earlier than they first planned to, even as early as Silverstone perhaps? A complete new chassis seems a bit of an ask, and that's an expensive thing to do for the team. Now, after seeing the W14's limited potential in pre-season testing, the Zero Side Pod's philosophy was officially rejected without hesitation. The team's desire to change direction and effectively start from scratch is expressed clearly and directly. However, the budget cap, which prevents heavy spending on forcing through large-scale update programs, is a limiting factor for Mercedes and all of the other teams chasing Red Bull. As Toto Wolff admits, this means Mercedes will not be able to perform miracles this year, but it demonstrated last season that it has an excellent recovery ability. Nevertheless, this was supposed to be the year when Mercedes reclaimed the top spot in Formula 1, fighting for victory in every race. Wolff's patience has run out, and the engineering team led by Mike Elliott will feel pressure and an ultimatum, despite the team's devotion to its no-blame culture, for continuing to insist on aerodynamic philosophy that failed in 2022. The positive results achieved in the second half of last season, including the incredible 1-2 in Brazil, prompted Elliott's team to refrain from drastically altering the design philosophy. The current W14 has undergone significant evolutions in comparison to the previous W13, incorporating some of the aerodynamic solutions seen on the Red Bull. However, the expected improvement in performance has not occurred, and the gap to the leader has grown. A perfect storm. Wolf described Russell's Brazil win. It got better and better and better. We were competitive in the American races, we won in Interlagos, and we knew that Abu Dhabi, where we struggled, is a bit different. That was the perfect storm for us. It wasn't good for 2023. We thought we were on the right track and the concept works, but it didn't. Last year was tough because we didn't understand. It came as such a surprise that we put the car in a zone where it wasn't generating any performance. In any case, not the performance that we thought was important. And this year, the second year into the regulations, there's a lot of evidence about what went wrong. Wolf and Mercedes have made no secret of the fact that the gains they made in 2022, compared to a Red Bull team that had stopped developing its car, duped them into continuing with an idea they now consider a failure. It's now time to start over, and the necessary components are already in the wind tunnel. Part of Wolf's frustration also stems from the fact that Aston Martin, a Mercedes customer team that purchases various mechanical components from it, is currently more competitive. Mike Elliott cannot afford for the W14B project to fail as well. 
While it may be tempting for any team to try a copy and paste of the Red Bull right now, some have suggested that Mercedes should instead look to Aston Martin, given the existing component sharing and the results its customers are getting. Last year's W13 problems were primarily due to porpoising, which was not predicted in the simulations and caused major issues in the first half of the season because it was also present in corners and a setup window that was too narrow to allow the floor and tyres to work. Last year, the two drivers frequently couldn't explain how the car could be so bad from the start, but with the right settings and free practice, find incredible downforce. This still occurs to some extent on the 2023 car, and it's also been observed in Australia. The Mercedes was put into the right window of use for qualifying and it delivered a fantastic performance, allowing George Russell and Lewis Hamilton to slot in behind Max Verstappen. However, this is still far from understood and is frequently influenced by outside factors. For example, the rise in temperatures over the Australian weekend aided Mercedes in getting some more grip from their tyres. As a result, it's not primarily a matter of incorrect aerodynamic concept, as was the case with Ferrari. Instead, Mercedes suffered a significant disadvantage as a result of the lack of correlation between the simulation data and the track. According to Wolf's comment, more conventional side pods will be part of Mercedes' plan, though the implications for the side impact structure suggest that this may not be possible right away. However, Mercedes should consider what Aston Martin has accomplished with its own side pod concept change for 2023, as it shares many internal components with Mercedes. With a new rear wing design introduced at the first race in Bahrain in 2022, Mercedes immediately took a step up in straight line speed. The new rear wing design has made it possible to reduce drag, which was a significant negative aspect of the 2022 Mercedes. Well, it's no coincidence that Aston Martin, which resembles the 2022 Mercedes W13 around the rear wing, is among the vehicles with the highest drag. However, when the Mercedes and Aston Martin strengths are combined, the potential is clear. Last year, Elliott and Andrew Shovlin frequently stated that the Zero Side Pod project was much faster in simulations than they had anticipated. On the track, however, this was not the case, and the car lost downforce due to porpoising and an overly rigid setup. Simply raising the car off the ground rendered the floor inoperable, or a too stiff suspension setup had to be adopted. This issue has been addressed in part by the W14, but the updated version will aim to run even closer to the asphalt. Mercedes requires more than just a restyle of the side pods. The whole design must function entirely differently. That will mainly have to come from the mechanical setup and the use of new rear suspension that ought to arrive together with aerodynamic updates from Imola. The goal is to finish ahead of Ferrari, and more importantly, ahead of its customer team, Aston Martin. And its starting point should be to learn from what that customer is doing right. With Brazil's false dawn in mind, Mercedes hasn't been swayed by some of its better 2023 performances, such as Hamilton's second place finish in Australia, instead doubling down on planned car changes. While Red Bull appears to be cruising to the championship even faster than in 2022, Wolf insists that he will not stop aiming for the stars. I don't want to change the targets yet about fighting for a world championship, even though it doesn't look realistic, he explained but I want to keep the motivation high to do the best possible job. And we're bringing quite some steps, a change of car layout from Imola onwards, and we must see how that performs. There is one team that's well ahead of everybody else. And then there are three teams with Ferrari, Aston Martin and us that are competing for the rest. And I think we need to beat these two guys before you can dream about coming back, before you can aim to win a championship. So this is like a two-way objective. But what are your thoughts? Can Mercedes make a major comeback much sooner than expected this season? Is it the side pods that are the most problematic on the W14 or is it something else? Please share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for your time. Please consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos.